Okay, I saw today where Professor Hawking, prior to his passing, made the statements, uh, a lot of statements I disagree with, but one of them is here that I disagree with, and he said that black holes could evaporate because they give off heat. Well, that is, is um, really unbelievable that he could have said that, because heat is nothing more than light. It's a movement of electrons o away from a source. Well, electrons can't get away from here. No electrons can get away, no protons, no neutrons, no, nothing can get out from a black hole. I don't care what it is. So he's saying that the heat can evaporate out of here and that will eventually go away. Absolutely incorrect. No way in the world. What you, this, the heat that you see in ev evaporating away and cascading out into the universe is ether, which is electrons, and the electrons are caused by the the event horizon crushing these. These arms are crushing in because they are sweeping into the ether particles which exist everywhere in the universe. As they sweep into them, they wrench in like this and crush that matter into, into um, light. It, it crushes the electrons into each other's orbits and they have to escape. Some of them go this way, some of them come this way. The ones that go this way never get out. So anything that gets in here is gone. It never comes back out. There is no way in the world these can evaporate. It's a ridiculous statement. These arms swing this way because they're being rubbed into the ether which surrounds everything because it is, is the luminescent effluent that flows away from every single luminescent body. Every single one. So what is permeating the entire universe, the entire universe, is the light from these luminescent bodies. That is light is, is dark matter and dark energy in transit. It does not interact with each other. When it's out just floating around doing nothing, saying, well, well is there something for me to interact with and smash into? No, we don't have anything with a nucleus out here. Well, let me just keep going. And that's what happens. They go on until they find matter that has a nucleus because that negative wants to be hooked up to that positive. And that happens even when the, the core becomes neutral, the negatives still want to get in, and that's when they collect in the orbitals, depending on how big the nucleus is. Quantum works, ether works, unified theory works with these sets of principles. Light can be accelerated, it can slow down, it is static electricity, it is electricity, it's lightning, it's sonoluminescence, it's every single energy interaction is a particle smashing into another matter, some other matter, whether it's an electron bumping into an electron that vibrates it and, and, and causes it to create a little bit of heat and possibly bounce off and be light, it's all, it's, it's all completely laid out in, in my videos. I have dozens of them about this. And I've been doing this for quite a while now, and the light experiments that were done well, two or three years ago have paid off handsomely. They, they, they show every one of these interactions, and you have to go up to Mud Foster University to see that. Because I've, I've got a ton of them up there. All right, thank you. Okay, this is a, uh, a spiral galaxy. And I claim, and they have said for a long time, that there's black holes power these things. And I agree with the 100%. Now, looking at that, say, well, why is there no black hole? How come I can't see a, a big black spot in there? Well, the reason is, is because the black hole is a round thing, just like a planet or the star. However, it's collapsed so completely that its gravitational pull will, won't let anything out from its grasp. However, in the event horizon is a round ball. It's not a, a flat disk. It's a round ball. And all around that round ball, as it collapses and crushes itself in, it, it shoots out particles in every direction around that ball. So you are going to see a glow. You're not going to see the ball. You're going to see a glow. But the glow you're seeing is from electrons and matter that is crushed far from the event horizon and 
propels out this way. The matter that's crushed closer to the event horizon, it just dives into the, the black hole. You will never see it. But you will never see the black hole because it's surrounded by crushed material that is expanding outwards. All right, there's two in the middle where it gets crushed. Some gets excited this way, some gets excited in. All right, so now let's talk about light. What happens to light here? Why is this so glowy here and this is less glowy, but there's really bright spots? Well, let's talk about the bright spots. Those we know are, are stars. We, know, we see them in our area. They're stars and clusters of stars and so forth. But the little extremely bright white dots are, are, are radiation from glowing little masses, which I am going to claim they're stars. We, we see one in our own sky. It's the sun. Now, they, 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 they look really, really white in this picture. Uh, I'm going to accept that, that they are giving out these frequencies. I don't know. It may be stepped up a little bit. But as you get closer and closer, you get these kind of frequencies, which are a complete mix of all the frequencies. Because what's happening here is that that spirals in. It's literally crushing itself. And these arms are pulling back like levers forcing matter in and just crushing all their different little molecules into each other's regions. They all want a magnetic field around them that they own. When they get into this configuration or in the mass of a star or some luminous body, they cannot maintain their orbits because they are being forced out from other invading matter primarily electrons is crushing into the other, and some of them get thrown out. They get extremely excited and violent, shaking, and then poof, they go flying out of there as light. And we, we pick it up as heat and light and the radiation from the sun. Well, the key to this whole thing is, is that between the sun and us, they are still electrons. They are electrons. They're spinning through space towards us in the vacuum of space, which has no matter to collide with. So they just travel along darkly. There's still matter. There's still energy. It's the dark matter and the dark energy. It's sitting right there out in space, right in front of us. It's been there forever. And all of these bodies illuminate that into the atmosphere everywhere, all through the universe. And then eventually it'll collide with a planet or a space station or a, a asteroid or a comet or whatever it collides with. And then it will be incorporated into that particular debris, whatever it is. I mean, it's just as obvious as that. Plants grow. The earth is growing. The earth isn't just stationary and not growing whatsoever. All the light that hits us, we absorb. We're not a black body where we give off all the light that comes in. Absolutely not. The, uh, the ionosphere is like a shell around the earth. It holds those electrons in. So we've got a lot of thinking to do. But the, the, the whole effect of a black hole is to create this space in and this drawing in. Anytime you draw energy in, it spins. That's, uh, Walter Russell back in 1930 came up with the exact representation of what, what energy is. And all energy is spinning particles. It's all spinning particles. I don't care how you, how you can construct. That's all energy is. And when that spinning particles interact with another particle, that becomes true energy energy. That's all, all energy is impact with something into something else. And sometimes it's an electron into electron cloud, which goes bloop and they bounce apart and shake and create heat and light. All right, so there's a lot to think about here and, 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 um, and it's not being thought about in the correct understanding because these particles that shoot out into space create a matrix of, of ether. And that is why they're being dragged. They're being dragged against this ether. It's all out here. Because every bit of matter, every single bit of matter is coated with electrons. All positives are flooded with electrons until they reach neutrality. And then the additional electrons collect in orbits. 
So every single thing there is is coated with electrons. The ether is virtually all electrons. The electron negativity bumps into the electron negativity and creates drag. The negativity of matter bumps into the negativity of the ether and that is like friction and it drags. And that is a lot more to this because they don't understand drag is literally electric. It's not rubbing against well, it is rubbing molecules to molecules, but it's the atoms of, I mean, the electrons of the molecules rubbing against the electrons of the other molecules. So, that tells me that we can manipulate the rubbing by changing the electrical properties of the rubber. Roger Mud Fossil University, one more time, talking about the uh, flow of ether. It's in the air everywhere. There is nothing that does not have ether surrounding it. It is the static electricity negative particles that are in the air. Now, playing off of that, I think I now understand something that might be able to increase the efficiency of air or water propellers. If the front of the propeller was a positive, we know the ethers are negatives. It's going to pull ether towards it, and the reverse would be heavily in the negative range of the, you know, uh, uh, material that the prop was made of, and the that would force the electrons away in the back. So it wouldn't just be gently slicing through the air, and the faster it sliced, the quicker it went. It would be pushing harder and harder against these electrons in the back, and I think it could make possibly a significant increase in the efficiency of the propellers. They're already using um, the, the kind of materials almost that they could magnetically alter these in the ones that are in the ocean, I, I believe, or in the waters. Uh, and I don't see any reason why they couldn't do that um, on the airplanes. And additionally, in turbofans and in um, jet aircraft, if one side was negative and the other side was positive, and as it was spinning, it was pushing the negatives that way. Simple as that. It would increase the efficiency. I'm pretty, pretty sure of that. I'd like to see somebody try it. All they have to do is take a prop and, 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 and find out what the efficiency is. Then add negative to the back side and positive to the front side. Even maybe some magnetic tape or something. Something simple. See if we can prove the principle. But it has to be a good strong magnetic field in the back. And they're literally like balloons. They're going to roll right over the ether forward. That's my anticipation. Thank you. Mud Fossil University looking to save things, save money, save the atmosphere, save the world. Okay, the exception possibly to the black hole not being able to see the actual hole, but the blackness is, is this, where the black hole itself was so spinning so violently and extremely that it would, it would um, create a flat disk. Now, the flat disk center would be the black hole. You would not see through that. You could not see through that. What it would do, it would literally, like a magnetic field, pull all the other stuff around it and in and, and, and around it this way and around it this way and collapse into that black hole. But the black hole itself would be solid matter, literally, and no light will escape from it, and no, you can't see through it. So, that's the key. And as this thing spins faster, 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 it constricts more and more and more because it's doing a generator effect. All the ether in space, which is spit out of here with the electrons, because it's spitting everywhere, spitting electrons there, pervade the entire universe. So these negatives are what this rubs up against of because every ma all matter is negative on the outside. There's nothing positive that sticks out of anything. All positives are surrounded by negatives. So you have negative against negative, creating drag, forcing this thing to constrict more and more, and like a I think maybe like a, a, a dancer, it, 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 it zoom pulls them in and they start spinning like crazy. I'm not certain of those things. We have to see if that all plays out, but I'm pretty sure it does. All right, so that's Mud Fossil University for today. Roger, and go up to Mud Fossil University, YouTube. Make sure it's free. Everybody can go there. Just, just have a good time. Have a couple of parties. I invite people over. Say, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? 
this, you're going to have to learn it sooner or later. I'm telling you this right now. So have a sterling day.